So let's go to the rigs uh, at the next step after we talk about the X-ray absorption, uh, because I imagine rigs is probably not a familiar term for most of you. Uh, so uh, I would like to go through this slide uh, and then quickly go through a couple more slides before the end of this talk. So back to this diagram again, we excite and then the electron will decay. And if you detect the electrons coming out, that's an electron yield, right? We, we, we call this down for now. So, and if you want to differentiate the electron, that's a photoelectron uh, regime and you, you will hear talks later. Now, if we, if we could resolve the outgoing photon coming out through this decay process, what will happen? So, X-ray absorption, I mentioned, what you do is you scan the instant photon energy and they will count the total number of the particle, the photon or electron coming out. So, you get a 1D spectra upon the instant X-ray excitation energy, right? So, now, if we resolve under this, the red one is the total number of the outgoing photon. Like if we have 1000 photon here, you you have one point here saying your XAS intensity is 1000 photon you detected. So now what if we resolve what are the energy of this photon buried in this X-ray absorption spectra? So at each point of the instant, we resolve what is the energy of the outgoing photon. So this axis is the emitted photon energy, we call it emission energy. So every point in the X-ray absorption becomes a spectrum now after we detect the energy of the outgoing photon instead of just the total number. Okay, I hope everything is following this. So this is very hard to read, of course. I removed two thirds of the data already. That's why we often plot this into a 2D map with a color scale indicating uh, where the photon sits in the emission energy. So this color means uh, higher intensity, that means lower. So at each excitation energy, the same as the X-ray absorption edge range typically, what you will see is you can resolve the out photon energy and you can get a map. In this map, I mentioned if you have the electron excited to the I occupied state, the same electron comes back. That's an elastic peak. You'll always see a line, sometimes weak, sometimes strong. And this line follows the same excitation energy and the same emission energy. That's an elastic line. And the signal you'll get is always sitting below this elastic line because you cannot generate energy, right? So you can only lose the energy. That's a yin, because this is the elastic line. So all the data here is from the yin elastic scattering. And if your instant energy is close to the absorption, that gives you the resonant effect. You resonant it to the actual absorption edge. That gives you the full name. So it's a resonant on the excitation energy, yin elastic I, X-ray scattering, RICS. So put it in one sentence, RICS technically gives you a further resolved X-ray absorption by looking at what is the energy distribution under the fluorescence yield, because the fluorescence yield detects only the total number. I hope this is clear here. So all the benefit of the Rigs comes up because the 1D X-ray absorption spectra get extracted into a 2D map. You get a completely new dimension of information along the emission energy. So the, this is a typical example. If we focus just on one part of the uh, Rigs map, by the way, Rigs map give you all the information. If you depend on where you focus, if you focus on here, 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 here or even below the resonant, give you all different uh, uh, information in this one map. Uh, here is just an example. Um, if you focus on the rig spectra, you can see the difference between two samples, but if you measure the X-ray absorption of these two samples, you barely see any difference in here because you are missing uh, this new information along the emission line. Okay, 